So I thought with the foot birthday promo going on, now would be a really good time to look back at some FIFAs of old, and in particular highlight some classic cards from Ultimate Teams of past. If you want to improve your ultimate team and need some coins to do so, you should check out my sponsor IG Vault. There's a link to do so in the description. And if you use the code Kieran, you'll get yourself a nice little discount off your order. So in this video today, we are going to talk about some of the most overpowered items ever in FIFA Ultimate Team. Now, let me say straight away, we are not including special items. We are just focusing on non-informed cards who, without a doubt, played miles better than their overall rating suggests. In this video, we've got about 30 different items from a bunch of different FIFAs but there is plenty that I am going to miss. I'm not going to be able to cover them all in this video so I'm going to need you guys to be active in the comments. If you think I've missed a player who was particularly overpowered in the past let me know who in the comments below and also don't forget to mention which FIFA as well. Also it did take quite a bit of time to collect all these cards and bring them all together because like sourcing the images isn't exactly easy so if you guys could leave like rating on this video that would be very much appreciated. So let's begin and we begin with a pretty big one. We have Gabby of Bongahaw who has had many many good items in Ultimate Team. I actually think his silver cards were amazing too, but it's this FIFA 12 item in particular that I think he's the most well known for. Literally in FIFA 12, he was the go-to Premier League forward, and uh, back then when pace was pretty much everything, um, yeah, this card obviously did indeed run wild. Just a quick note, the physical section on these cards is actually meant to be heading. Obviously, stats are a bit different back then, but when I was doing the graphics, unfortunately, I couldn't change that. The next item is actually a more recent one, FIFA 18, and it's Bakayoko, and this card was just a nightmare. He was literally in teams from the start of FIFA to the end of FIFA, just because he was that good and that affected, effective sorry, in the CDM role, and in this year, he obviously had the uh, hyperlink to Kante, so literally everyone, and I mean everyone, most teams had at least one of them in their starting 11 and a lot just had both of them because of how easy they were to link to a good players in this year's FIFA. Jack Butland is another player who's had some pretty OP cards over the years but this one in particular is the one that stands out in my mind. It was a nightmare to come up against. How about this one for a classic? Definitely one of the highlights of FIFA 15 which in my opinion is one of if not the best ultimate team ever. Um, Shikawi was just mad because he was one of the very very few players in the game to have 5 star 5 star and at this stage of ultimate team that was actually a very big rarity and this card was just great in game. It really 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 was brilliant as a centre forward just in behind the striker and uh, he cost like 800 coins because he wasn't easy to link into sides. There is actually quite a few non-rare items in this video and one in particular that we do of course have to talk about is a KDB when he was at Wolfsburg. I believe this is FIFA 14 and what a card this was. It was just stupid in game and it literally was an item that you could use at the start of the game and at the end of the game and it was still effective. The five star weak foot way back when was just so useful and for whatever reasons you could just bang long shots in all day with this card. Dede the centre back is on the next slide and he is without a doubt one of my favourite centre backs ever in FIFA Ultimate Team. Not number one, but he's definitely in at the top five. This item was just stupidly good in game. And uh, it's also worth mentioning in FIFA 13, chemistry it was a lot different than it is now. So he was even easier to get onto full chemistry. Um, but this card, as you can see, the pace was mad. And also, another thing to remember is way back when, 80 plus pace on a centre back was a very, very rare thing. It's very common nowadays in Ultimate Team, but back then, there were not many centre backs. Um, with this amount of pace and that just made him so good in game very good defending stats as well for a base item and he was just an absolute monster we spoke about kdb a few moments ago but he wasn't even the most overpowered cam in that game that title goes to this man draxler who like kdb has the five star weak foot and was just stupid in game he also was miles quicker than that pace suggests he felt quick his passing was mad his shooting was insane he's another one that he could bang long shots with and this guy's dribbling was also just ridiculous this item is honestly up there with some of the best midfielders ever in ultimate team in terms of like overpoweredness if that's even a word s fine 
is without doubt in my top three of overpowered players of all time, just from my personal opinion. This card was just ridiculous in game, and once again, it's another item that you literally could use at the start of the game, and you could still get away with using it at the end of the game, because back then, FIFAs were a bit more fun, and as I say, this item was just ridiculously clinical in game. Ignore that 70 shooting, it's a lie, because this guy could score from anywhere, and he didn't even have a particularly good weak foot either, but his left foot, for whatever reason, felt like a five-star weak foot at times. Very quick, hard to dispossess, great goal scorer, awesome card. Okay, we're going to do these next three together for obvious reasons. All three of them are from FIFA 21, and I just don't want to focus on players from this year too much, but Gomez, Mendy, Pope, literally one of them features in every single team most of the time when you play Weekend League, so um, yeah, you know why they're here. They're very, very good in-game, and they definitely do perform much better than their rating suggests. So let's quickly get away from the meta sweat of FIFA 21, and let's move on to a more fun throwback item, and we have Freddy Guarin, who is another one of them who's had multiple years of good ultimate team items but this one in particular is without doubt the standout FIFA 13 was a fun year it had a lot of overpowered cards and this was definitely a standout item you could play cam center mid CDM and he would be amazing in all those roles of course this video wouldn't be complete without talking about a barber who yeah, like, I've got to be honest, he was never that amazing for me, but for everyone else, and literally seemingly everyone else, he was amazing. Um, in FIFA 13, 14, and 15, he was very, very good, and, uh, yeah, bit of a problem card, this one. As I say, it annoyed me because of how good he was for my opponents, but for me personally, um, although he was decent, he just didn't seem that great, but, uh, as I say, it's definitely an Ultimate Team classic. One of my favourite fullbacks of all time across all FIFAs is Jordan. Lukaku, he was just really good, like stupidly, stupidly good. He was, you were able to play this guy right up until the end of the game. Quick, physical, and just that alone made him really, really good defensively. But um, yeah, he was just a beast. He just really, really was. When you look back at ultimate teams of old, like goalkeepers like Pope, Butland are definitely going to be mentioned. But one in particular that I think goes a bit underrated, but was definitely overpowered, is Marchetti from FIFA 13, who was without a doubt the go-to goalkeeper for Serie A size that year he was just stupidly good like and that's literally the only way I can describe it he really really was he just made insane reflex saves and uh, was a brilliant keeper all year long and yeah just a fantastic card in game and it's going to be one of them if you know you know if you played FIFA 13 you'll know all about how good this item was but if you didn't play that game maybe you might not have heard of him let me know in the comments if you have I do like the fact that I've made this video like with no particular order in mind because it's just really nice looking at these items again. FIFA 13 was so fun and one of the like best cards to come out of that year for me personally was this Mayuka. Now, if you're new to Ultimate Team, this card might actually look really, really poor to you. But in game, I am telling you, he was ridiculous he was rapid and in front of goal once again that 67 shooting is an absolute lie not only was he shooting miles better than those stats suggest he also had a five star weak foot which as i say back then certainly wasn't as common as it is now and yeah this item was just mad it could compete with very high rated gold strikers and it was just really really fun to use this next one is an absolute classic well a lot of these cards are classics but this one is a proper proper classic Mikoli look at the stats on this card for an 82 overall that's real by the way this was his actual item look at those card stats and in-game stats were also really really good on this item so as you can imagine in-game this card was very very good and because of his overall he was also really really cheap and he was just a beast like literally every Serie A side in this ultimate team was Di Natale and Mikkeli up front or like one of them in it cam and it just worked so so well um, yeah, it's it's actually kind of mad looking at them card stats on that overall. You would not get that nowadays at all. Now, don't worry, FIFA 12 fans. I didn't forget about him. Nilmar obviously features in this video, and it's another one of them. If you know, you know. This guy was the go-to striker of that FIFA, especially for Brazilian teams, which were very, very popular that year. And, yeah, he was just nuts. Ridiculous pacing game, like stupidly quick. Very good on the ball. And uh, as per usual with all these cards, very good shooting attributes as well. It was just, 
yeah, a mad card. Like a lot of these items, like the cards just don't do them justice. I wish I had gameplay available for all these items, but it would just take way too long to source and it might not even be possible for some cards because uh, people weren't recording FIFA as much back then. But wow, this nil my card. If, if you played FIFA for 12, you will know all about how good this item was. Obviously, we can't go through this video without forgetting to talk about David Luiz. Like, he's another one that's had multiple years of being really, really good in Ultimate Team, but his FIFA 13 item is the one that stands out the most for me. Just a stupidly good card, which felt quicker than 78 pace in game, and yeah, defensively just was an absolute monster. And yeah, he was annoying to come up against. He really, really was. And that year, he also got a CDM item, which everyone absolutely loved. Same FIFA, same position, different item, Ogbonna. Non-rare cards in this like, Ultimate Team FIFA 13 were just so fun to play with. Accessible for everyone because they were so cheap and packed so much and just really, really good to use. Ogbonna was rapid, he was physical, like, he had really, really good physicals in game and very good defensively and also, for me personally, used to score so many corners with this item and it's one of the reasons why I really loved it when we got Flashback Ogbonna, uh, the other Ultimate Team and that was also one of my favourite centre backs so uh, yeah big fan of Ogbonna over the years in foot. Nedum Anue in both FIFA 14 and 15 was one of the go-to choices for the centre back role and yeah obviously with him being English and in the Premier League at the time um, he was very easy to get into sides and he was an item that you would see a lot and he was literally uh, one of the quickest gold centre backs in the game as well like I've said way back when in these FIFAs this kind of pace on a centre back was not common and for those reasons alone he was obviously very very good in game and also really popular. I think if everyone did a top 10 ultimate team cards of all time kind of video referring to overpowered items, Ramirez would feature in literally everyone's, everyone who's at least played FIFA 13. This card is the equivalent of what Kante is nowadays, but it was 81 overall, it didn't cost much, it was super fast, and it was just a card that you would see in literally every, and I mean every, Premier League or Brazilian related side. It was brilliant. Marco Sao, another classic FIFA striker, and another one of them low rated players who's had some really, really good silver items but also some really nice low rated golds. Now in this FIFA in particular I actually thought he was better than a barber. Most people might not agree with that but for me personally he was and uh, he's another absolute classic especially for his silver cards as well. Eder is just another classic non-rare FIFA striker who was just very very good in game. In FIFA 14 in particular we actually had quite a few of these. There was players like Rodrigo as well who was really really good but I think Eder was definitely up there with the best. One of the most fun items in Ultimate team of all time for me personally was uh, Adel Tarap's FIFA 13 item. 5 star, 5 star on it, so freaking useful and like I've said, rare back then, insane dribbling, really nice pace and definitely could score some absolute bangers with this card. It was just a really fun attacking mid item. Depending on when you started playing Ultimate Team, you may or may not know about Taiwo but it's another one of them, if you know, you know. Physically an absolute monster, although that physical stat isn't correct, that should be for heading, um, but in-game he was a physical beast. Um, defensive stats were very nice too, and his pace in-game, he was just so, so quick. He really, really was, and uh, as I say, way back when, he literally was the go-to choice for the left-back role if people weren't going for um, a skill at left-back, which is what a lot of people did back then. Another striker I absolutely hated coming up against was Wellington. He was just stupidly good, and in this same year, m and K was there as well, and them two as a striker partnership was just so, so common. In fact, the Russian league in general was actually really popular um, back then. Now, we've spoken about a bunch of centre-backs in this video today, but without a doubt, I think my favourite of all time in terms of overpowered centre-backs is actually Felipe Santana, who... Like, this, this was a ridiculous card. It really, really was, because not only did he have stupid pace, but defensively he was solid, and physically he was a monster too, but on top of all of this... He was six foot four. He was huge, and especially back in these FIFAs where crossing was big, that was brilliant for a centre back. Not only for attacking headers from corners, but defending them. Because as I say, way back then, everyone was just crossing constantly. That was the meta, and it was horrible at times. But um, yeah, Santana was just perfect in this game. And with him being Brazilian, he obviously had links to other very good Brazilian centre-backs like Dede and David Luiz and that was literally the three at the back combination that you would see so often in that game. 
We started with a classic and we're going to end with a classic. You guys thought I forgot, didn't you? Nope. FIFA 12 El Shirawi is probably one of the most popular items of all time in every single FIFA. Like seriously, this card was just everywhere back then and it was just a fun item. And not only was it fun, but it was just stupidly effective. And it's another one of them items that although stats don't look anything too spectacular in game, it was brilliant. And it's another one of them that you literally could use all year long. And not only would it be fun but also it would be effective this is without doubt an absolute ultimate team classic so that's gonna do us for this video i hope you've enjoyed this little trip down memory lane and hopefully you guys will get involved in the comments too let me know who you think the most overpowered player in fifa ultimate team of all time is down there and also let me know which players do you think i have missed out if you could leave like rating on the video that'd be great thanks for watching and as always i'll catch you in the next one